Hello, I'm Charles, and I'm a beekeeper that loves old bee equipment. Today I'm going to be doing some repairs on an old swarm bait box that was gifted to me. Hey there! I know it's been a while, but uh, I decided today to film a video based on this really neat box that somebody gave me. This apparently sat in a tree uh, over a decade ago. And it sat there for a number of years. And the person that had it on their property tried to find the original beekeeper that put it out there, but it had no success. It had a piece of plywood up top and a piece of plywood on the bottom. Um, and it also has this really neat entrance that they made right here and then put that cross to keep squirrels and other animals out of it. Um, it's neat and it does have rot. It especially has it along here and has a little bit uh, along the top up here as well but this this isn't really a worry and we're gonna do some patching today and I figured this would be a good uh, excuse to do another patching video show how I do it once again and uh, maybe you'll learn something about it and seven of the frames inside were salvageable uh, these frames are in pretty good condition they're not rotten. They can probably use a extra nail, which is a trick that I often do with uh, with uh, frames between seasons. Like pretty much any time that I put new foundation in something, I'll put a new nail or staple in just to uh, just to give it some strength again. So here we are. I got the frames out of it, and you can see wax moths a little bit in there, and the wood here is very very soft and there's a screw left over so I, I guess I could pull that out our goal is to cut the rotten parts off and preserve the good ones and it looks like somebody patched this box before right here here's a patch uh, the patch still appears to be pretty sturdy so we might put a couple screws in it to ensure that it stays sir stays uh, sturdy but I don't think we'll need to cut any of this bottom off at all. Uh, wood appears solid. Now one of the tricks I follow that help me with these rabbited boxes, rabbits are these teeth in here. You basically just connect from tooth to tooth and don't worry that you have those special edges. That doesn't make uh, making the new part that complicated, but you just line up the two and that's where you're going to cut and it gives you such a great straight line between those two surfaces so that's what we're going to cut you want to cut above the rot and maybe as we cut in we'll find maybe the rot goes deeper but I, I doubt it I'm I'm feeling kind of in here and the softness ends before we get up there this side here has the same issue so we're going to line it up to the rabbit and I don't want to go too deep because then we'll then we'll be cutting off part of the handle here uh, that's right here excuse me I should, that's right here and we don't want to do that so let's mark the box you may ask why are you saving this thing because I'm short on deep boxes, and a good new deep box is about 50 bucks. Uh, just a little bit of fixing of this gives us essentially what's a $50 box. And we even have most of the frames that'll work out fine. We do have some cracks right here that I'll probably fill with wood glue, uh, but we'll get there as well. Now this is set only as deep as I need it to go. I am eyeballing it here. But uh, this should be enough to cut it. So. Alright, well, we have the first one cut. Now, I, I wish there was a more uh, elegant way of doing this, but there we go. We're going to have the nails left over here, but careful when you're pulling these out because you don't want to rip the ends. Because the end might be a little bit rotten and a little fragile too. And you don't want to pull out anything you didn't intend to. So we can pull this wood out of here. And then we can gently pry each one of these nails out. 
because we want to preserve as much of the tooth as, the, as we can, even if it's not perfect. Okay, let's see if we can pull this out. There we go. All right, here's the second cut. Let's see if we can pop this free. Well, one of our issues is that there's a nail right there, and we could easily burst this if we do it that way. So we're literally going to want to cut right through that nail. So normally I'd use a sawzall for that, but we might be able to burst it with the circular saw. burst that so let's see if we knock it out okay there's one side okay there's the other that's a pretty clean cut look honestly it looks a little bit better than the one over there on the other side I might overcut that a little bit but nah, it's nothing wood filler won't fix but it's a pretty clean cut well with most of our our uh, cutting here done I'm gonna vacuum up real quick and clean up our area that way we can apply wood filler and do some other things in a little bit there we go let's put this one right here now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the length of it first and make sure that it's flush with this scrap piece of wood and then we'll trim it down to what we need so we're gonna make sure it's good over there and do our line right here and then we'll give this a cut. Hey there. After splitting the piece off, we were able to make one that fits just right and it fits right between the two teeth right there. Now you may have little gaps like this where it didn't quite cut real well or maybe there's a little bit of rot there. In this case, it's just slip with the blade a little bit. But don't worry about that. That's, that's wood filler's job to worry about that, not you. So we have this patch cut, and we're not going to attach it yet. We're going to cut the other patch first, and uh, then we'll patch this and do some minor repairs on parts of the box, because there are soft parts on the box, and there are uh, places that we want to fill in some rock gaps. We want to re-stabilize this patch that the previous owner did. Uh, we're going to make it work. All right, now, how do we make those patches? Well... I'll always line up the bottom here and you more or less use the hole itself to make the patch. You trace it on the inside and you even trace where the teeth are at of the rabbit cut. Remember, you gotta hold this flush to pull this off, cause you don't. It, it it can deviate a little bit, and it'll still work for you. Once again, wood filler is your friend, but hopefully, you get yourself a good template of it, and then you can cut it to where it works. We don't need it perfect. We just need it to work. All right, we're back. Uh, I split this, um, and it's it's not a great cut. Um, but we're gonna work with it. Uh, I don't feel like doing it again because this will work. Uh, to cut these rabbits out, I'm gonna use a jigsaw. Um, pardon the filming of this and, and pardon that I, I didn't split it on camera. It's just really hard to do the camera piece and split it properly. So let's cut these rabbits out. Okay, well, let's see how it fit. Okay. Oh, nice and snug, too. See, we it's not quite perfect. Once again, this, this is what our, our friend wood filler is for. One of my other concerns is right here, and I, I swear I didn't do this. This piece is definitely loose. But that's not too big a deal. What we're going to do is we're going to fill it with glue, and then we're going to put a few screws down here to re-stabilize it. There we are. Our goal is to get it in that little crack down there. Now we're going to do this a little bit from both sides. I'm going to use 
We're going to use two screws to stabilize this, so let's do our pilot holes real quick. But the wood does feel a little soft, so it is a little bit rotten. But we want it done in these two places right here. That way we don't split it, because it with these thin pieces, you, you need to cut pilot holes. You will split them. You don't want to do that. Sometimes even with pilot holes, you split them. It's, it's just the nature of thin wood. I don't think that'll be a problem here. Well, let's pop it in. There we go. There's one. There's two. So, you see this is now squeezed together at joint. And with the glue, it should it should make a nice tight bond. Now they stabilized this pretty well with a patch that is these two parts. I originally thought it was just here, but it's also here. They use long staples for this. And as much as I like that, I, I still want to put one screw through each. Just as my way of being sure that stability stays. Because it, it looks like it's a good solid edge they did right there. It looks well done, but it doesn't, it can only help me to put a screw through each. It can't hurt me. Oh, goodness. There we go. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of rot in there. There we go. See? There we go. Now it's a little more stable, a little less likely to break off. All right, we're going to attach the first piece now that we've secured some of the more weaker parts. Now we're going to put a thin coat of glue on here. I learned from my friend Candy that you don't want to put too much wood glue on because then the glue will bond with itself and not the wood. So we just put we just put enough on. It doesn't have to be too little. This is to be just enough. Okay. I think this is the way it goes. Oh, I'm sorry, other way. There we go. Okay. So they're nice and snug. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put pilot holes here and here to attach it. Now these are a little longer than I'd like, but at least we'll get good grip with them. There's one. There's the other. Nice. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do pilots along here, and these will be going downward, and for these we're going to use very long screws. That way they get a very good grasp into the wood itself. In fact, I think we only need to do about three of them. So here we are. We do have that small gap in between, but we'll do that with wood filler toward the end. All right, let's handle the other side here. So a little bit of rot left right where I'm touching right now. I'm not too concerned about that. It's right by the edge. Well, I already drilled the pilot holes in here, so let's slide it in. Okay. Huh. It's not resting exactly how I'd like it, but that'll work. So let's attach this. I didn't like how that gripped on. Might have to use longer screws. Alright, well this is gripping fine. This one, not so much. Um, I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to use a longer screw here. 
All right, we have the proper one this time. Oh, that's gripped. Okay. Cool, we didn't split anything. Hey there, well, honestly, this is just too rotten. I'm pulling at it a little bit, and all I want to do is get the lip. That's all I want. So, because this is pretty sturdy wood right here, I have something that is about the thickness I need, so I could trim off a piece, and uh, that should work for us. Let's try that. Now, one of my issues here is this inside has a metal rail, and I'm going to hit against it. Uh, I don't want to hit against it, but it's it's just inevitable. I'm going to try my best not to cut it, and I think my best friend here is coming in very carefully with a sawzall. Um, I might be able to cut it here and then do little cuts going down and have use a chisel, but I just don't have a chisel to do it. Now, I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, and maybe taking the rail out would be the best idea, but I'm just going to try this right now. Alright, let's try this off right here. Okay, we got a, we got a pretty flat surface. That's, that's good. That's better than I deserve for being that clumsy with a tool. But there we are. Um... I might trim off this little piece right here, but it's not going to make it lay any flatter. What we're going to do is we're going to cut a little bit of this board off, put this along top, and uh, that, that should help us out. Now with this one, we're going to mark it in two places and just join it. Once again, let, let the hole tell you about the patch. I'll put it that way. Let the hole tell you about the patch. Right, here we go. Alright, let's do a test fit. There we are. Not bad. And it follows along a little bit of the contour here. We could, honestly, I would prefer to have the straight part on top. Because this is the imperfect part right here. And there's no sense. If I can put the flat one here and then have the wood filler in between, that would actually be more ideal. So we're going to do that. Trying to find the, the best version of this. There we go. In fact, that actually might be the best version where the rough side is over here. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Let's add a little glue. We're going to let the rough side be the side facing us. Which might be against better judgment, but you know what? It's okay. Because we're not going for pretty, we're going for functional. Now, I have a few choices of why I can do this. This is very thin. Uh, to where I could use thinner hive nails, but I would still actually drill a pilot hole for the nail. I don't think that has enough enough teeth. Um, I think something high precision would do it. So we're going to try this. And I might regret it. But we're going to give it a try. So let's try it over here first. Okay. Not too bad. Not great, but not too bad. Now let's put this one right here. Okay, not bad, not bad. They're still sticking out a little bit, but that's fixed with a hammer. See that we're hit against a little bit of rot here. I'm gonna have to do another IC, which is okay. Okay, there's another right there. Let's further tap that in. So we got three. 
I'd like to do one right here. That way we get a little bit more stability in another direction. Good stuff. These are the same ones I use on frames. Uh, I used to be a fan of nail gun nails. And then I fell in love with uh, the staple gun, especially because I'll, I'll put about eight staples in it. And perhaps I'll show the pattern that I do with mine, because uh, I feel it gives it a lot more stability. But this is what we're at. This piece right here, I wish it was down a little bit more, but you know, we can, we can live with that and we can plane this just a tiny bit to make it sit a little bit better. And so we plane that edge a little bit. So it still has a rise up here and the boxes may not fit great together right there. But with hope, we'll fill up with some propolis and it won't be a big deal. Uh, if you put wood filler on there, Unfortunately, the minute that propolis and wood filler touch, you'll tear the uh, wood filler patch that you put on there right off. So it, it's really not the best of ideas. Some other places we're going to put a little wood filler uh, before I start moving to that phase is we have screw holes right here. The wood itself is solid, but we have screws, unfortunately, that came down for the piece of plywood that was on this when it was a swarm trap. Um, we, we don't want that. We really don't want that. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to make some wood filler. We're going to take sawdust. Which, if you have a little sander, you just empty that guy out. It normally gives you more than enough. And add the key component here of wood glue. And we want it to where it's the consistency of peanut butter. <laughs> now our goal is to fill all these little cavities that we previously would do with glue. Now, something I've discovered is if you do it first with wood glue and you can get it to fill the cavity a little bit, you get a little less drippage when you do this. But frankly, this stuff is usually so thick, it, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it's not gonna drip through the hole uh, to, to the other side. It's usually gonna stick around. So there's multiple things you can use for it. You can see I'm using a highly technical thing called a piece of wood. Um, but I'm probably going to move to my brush in a second. And honestly, I really got to compliment these wood glue brushes because the minute that the glue dries in here, you can just beat it free and it's now good because it's just a rubber brush. And it's really good at getting into all those little crevices. And because it's so reusable, I no longer have to just use old brushes and that or my fingers because I don't like getting it on my fingers if I can help it. Right here is this. It, it, it's rotten and the area around it is a little rotten. It's right next to the patch that uh, the previous owner did. I think I'm going to jab a, just jam some wood filler in there just so there's no space. Um, once again, it may very well tear off if two boxes touch each other right here and the propolis pulls. But my thought of filling this in isn't so much stability or preventing rot. It's more so keeping a place where hive beetles can't, can, can't come and go. Alright, so let's go over what we did here. We put wood filler all along the crack here. And we did it on only this side for this one uh, because on the other side there was no significant gap there was a little bit of rot and soft wood right here we put it on we did some for the other patch on a crack that was in there as we get over to this side we as much as I don't like doing it on this surface because it can tear uh, it can tear off and just tear off whatever you put we filled that gap right there with a glob it's not completely full and it's not flush, 
but we can live with that. And if you needed it flush, you could wait a few days for this to completely dry this glob. And then you can put another one right on top of it until you get it to the point where you can sand it flush or just live with it, frankly. Uh, there's also a few others like here and here where I filled in screw holes that you can't quite see. That's just so water can't get into those holes. I expect uh, that the, because it's such a thin bit of surface, it won't tear off. Uh, and on top of it, a nice coat of paint is going to be put on this. Uh, the inside of this box is also going to be painted. Uh, we have a lot of people that are probably going, oh my god, you're painting the inside of a hive. There is no data that says painting the inside of a hive is bad. Uh, there are people that complain, oh, there's toxins in paint. We paint our walls with the same stuff. We paint our houses with it and we live in it. It's not toxic. It's just water-based paint. But um, I'm open to my mind being changed based on studies, but there's no studies that are saying that painting the inside of these boxes has anything bad and arguments about fumes and gases. I'd love to see a study that shows their effect on honeybees. Like, once again, my mind's open to be cha being changed, but based on real data, not anecdotal stuff that is repeated again and again in the beekeeping community. Here, we have this interesting guy, which this was the entrance that they put in. And they put two nails here at this narrow bottom here. Uh, if I tried to pull these out, I would break this. So there's no doing that. I think what I might do is, for the time being, I'm just going to leave it open. A mouse could slide in here in winter, which is a concern. You could just put a piece of flex tape over both sides and cover it up. Um, that would work, frankly. Uh, it doesn't have to be a perfect solution. It just has to be one that works. Interestingly enough, there's another <laughs> entrance right here. That's what this is. There is a dowel rod that they glued in and broke off. And you can see it on the other side as well. Uh, remember how I told you with the other box that older beekeepers tended to uh, use additional entrances? Well, th this I think really is an older hive. I, I couldn't put a date on it, but I, I think this is a, is a much older hive, probably sometime in the 70s or 80s. So what do we have left over now to work on? We have these frames, which are in pretty good condition. Now, these frames are put together using nails in the sides here. They're covered up a little bit by propolis, but you can see them over here. And it's obviously a nail gun they used, which, you know, I, I like. I like that they did it. They use wax in these, which you can tell by these guys right here. And we're going to pound those out in a second. But we can reuse these frames. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an additional staple in these. Um, that way we have even more stability. So step one in getting these working again. Let's get the uh, tacks out of them. You can just pull them out once you give them a couple taps. This one I bent a little bit and we can add a little bit of pressure. One thing you're looking for is does it wobble at all when you kind of bend it like this? This isn't wobbling one, but that's a good sturdy frame. There isn't much I have to do with this. Uh, once again, an additional staple or a nail in each piece would be good here, and we're going to do that. But here it isn't heavily needed, I'll give it that. One important thing to note when you're dealing with these old frames, don't cut yourself on the wiring. Um, a lot of the time I'll convert these from frames that were wired with wax foundation over to plastic foundation and the wires in these things are really sharp use gloves use wire cutters uh don't cut yourself doing it it's not it's not worth the tetanus shot after i'll put it that way now here's an important lesson not all frames are alike these these particular frames are not true slotted frames these are tab frames they have a couple other names to them but basically this piece tears off and is reattached if you want to slide foundation in. Uh, there are ones that are slotted which are more for plastic foundation. 
Uh, you also see that this is a slotted bottom. There's no gap here. There's just a, there's just a hole right here. And these can become, become gummed up with propolis and stuff. So you may have to use a flathead screwdriver to pull that out or a hive tool. But the key difference is like, look at this one. This one is, is, uh, has that significant gap. Uh, that's for a more traditional foundation system. We're using a wax foundation. It doesn't mean that we can't use the plastic frames with it, but you'll find they'll often fall through. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, sometimes I'll put a nail to kind of join these two, but we'll, we'll figure out what we can do because I, I have a little bit of both types of foundation. Had a neat find with the box. Here we have 7 2008. So that's the last time that we know this hive was used. Uh, so 13 years ago now. And remember what I said about wires? Here's one of those wires that is left over right here. One of the little hooks. So what we're going to do now that we have all the uh, little brackets out is we are going to gently pry each one of these up. And we're going to slide a piece of foundation inside for all the ones that are closed like this, which we'll do. Pardon me. Like all the ones like this that we'll, we'll do first. Because these are the really easy ones because I can just slide plastic foundation in. Now your friend here is your flat-headed screwdriver. And you just slowly come down. You don't just pull it off from one end because this is very thin and you'll snap it. Just slowly walk it down. And I feel the, the nails popping out. And frankly, the nails in this are not going to be any good after. Um, I, I just pull them out and use something else. We're almost there. See? And the nails themselves, this time, they're stuck on the board. They're like here, 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 and here. Somebody used a nail gun for this. And I like nail guns. They're, they're pretty cool. And I only moved on to the staple gun because my nail gun broke. But I've actually found that I really like the staple gun more. So now we're going to take foundation, which by the way, if you're going to use pl plastic foundation, use black. Use black. The reason why is because when you're looking for eggs, the contrast is a lot easier to spot that egg. Uh, white ones exist, and so do yellow ones. And the white ones, you're just not going to see that egg. And with the yellow ones, it, it's just as hard, uh, but not quite as hard as the white. But uh, the black, I, I, honestly, I don't know why they make it in any other color. And I'd love to hear an answer of why anybody prefers a different color. Because uh, there's just something I'm not seeing. Um, I wish it was universal. Oh, I see we missed a nail. I can feel it. So I'm going to pull that nail real quick. There we go. See? Alright, we're going to slide that on there. Get into the slot. And it fits like a glove. See? Then we can put this little slot back. And the way that I'm going to do it is with the staple gun. Now, I could do it upward, but my staple is too long. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do it uh, front to back like this. One, two, three. And that's good and sturdy. That, uh, that ain't going nowhere for a while. Here's another frame that I put together. Uh, one of the easy ones. I can say whoever put these together, uh, they, they put together a mean frame. They knew what they were doing. Um, I wanted to show you the trick that I do with a lot of these frames. I will put one right here in this nook. And what that does is it feeds into there. And by feeding into the bar and attaching there, it's very unlikely this will pull out when uh, if this little joint gives. Uh, it gives it a little bit more mechanical stability and I really like that. Now I got some interesting stuff that I'm going to include. This here is foundation that somebody was practically giving away 
Uh, it bec it comes from Walter Kelly Co. And it's a beautiful box. This is from the 1970s. How do I know that? It literally has the dates written on it, uh, on its accompanying boxes um, that that have the date. So this this is a uh, about 50 year old foundation. Here's our first candidate for good foundation. So we're gonna get the dried crud out of it. That way it fits in the slot properly. And we're gonna kind of do the same up here because there is plenty of old wax moth droppings is what that is. The wax moths are long gone and dead, but their droppings remain. Let's pull this out. This one's being a little stubborn. Oh, the, the nails are actually coming up with this one. Nice. Okay. Well, the nails are still mostly here, and we're gonna. I'm gonna remove those in a second. But our hope is to slide this in, fit it, and then put this in and put it in tight enough to where it holds. That's our goal. All right. We're mostly successful. Now we can attach this piece right here. Oh, I see. Once again, I I got a nail in the way. Now, I'll be honest, getting these to fit in there exactly is not fun. And if you wanted to give it more stability, what you could do is you literally could, through these holes, put fishing line uh, and weave that through. The bees don't care. Uh, it's a good method to give the frame a little bit more stability. Excuse me, give the foundation a little bit more stability. But I think what we got going here is fine. Here's another one. Now remember, as a frame, this, this is going to be pretty fragile. Like, it'll hold hold firmly, but if you hit against this, uh, it, it's pretty fragile. So, once they draw the frame out, it'll be a lot less fragile. Important thing to know that, although I, I'm saving these because they're worth it, not all frames are worth saving. Uh, I don't have an example here, but sometimes wax moths will just eat up these bars on the side and then they just have no integrity and will snap on you. Ask me how I know. Um, sometimes you'll have it to where down here these pieces are also having a lack of integrity because of that. Or they're just rotten and snapping. Don't, don't put rotten frames in your hive. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling people to do that. Uh, just telling them, you know, if it's good, it, it might be worth you taking the time to fix it up. Um, another thing you could do that could have been an option here is uh, to just do a foundationless frame. You could just paint wax along here and put that in the hive. Um, I would tell people that they really need to look at the double-edged sword that is foundationless. Uh, you can make chunk honey with it. Uh, you can cut queen cells out. Uh, but you're trading off that the frame is now actually pretty fragile, especially when it's full of honey. Um, I also would never go full foundationless. Uh, there might be a beekeeper that once again pokes in here and goes, well, why not? Well, if you have the frames in the box and they're all foundationless, bees could build this way too. Uh, they can just build from side to side and kind of ignore what you're doing here. Because uh, they will fill that cavity. At the very least, you should put a frame with foundation sandwiched between two foundationless frames. Uh, that way, it's foundationless, foundation, foundationless, foundation. That way, they build the correct direction. This foundation is that old stock from the Walter Kelly Beekeeping Company. They are a very old American company. Uh, they were purchased, I believe, by Man Lake or merged into Man Lake not too long ago. Um, so they, they no longer exist as that. Um, they were one of the old ones with Root and De Dant, um, and an important part of American beekeeping history. Uh, some of the old names, uh, like Woodman, 
are gone now because Woodman was purchased by Day Dant back in the 70s. So it's neat to see some of their stuff still around. And those are beautiful old boxes with the honeybees and their logo and all that. So when I run out of this old stock, I will preserve those boxes and keep them and probably make something neat for the wall with them. Uh, because it's it's something that you're just not going to get it anymore. And I'm not sure when they took the bees off the box and made it not look so elegant anymore and so plain. But uh, it's definitely beautiful art on there. The final question I think I'm going to get is, wow, that really is some old foundation. It's half a century old. Um, will it work? Well, I can proudly tell you, in all the hives that I put it in, because this ain't the first, uh, it does in fact work. I, I have a lot of, sh of foundation for shallows that I'm slowly working at. It's what populates my, uh, my one Ross Round box, which is basically a honeycomb box that makes honeycomb discs. And you need, you actually need wax foundation for it. And that's what I've been using. Uh, it works effectively. The other deep frames I've done this with, they are working pretty effectively. Uh, bees don't know the difference. If it's, if it's this old, it, it doesn't seem to bother them. So, yeah, it works just as effectively. Does it work better? Um, anecdotally, it, it, it works just the same as any other foundation. Uh, just as much as the plastic foundation, frankly. So long as plastic foundation has the amount of wax it needs, it, it works just as well for me. Well, it has only been about an hour, and that fan has really dried up most of this wood filler. So I do feel comfortable putting these frames back in, especially because none are sitting on any glue. I think it's the safest place to put them, frankly. Wow, this one, I, uh, I really uh, knocked the sides out of that, huh? Uh, at least there's nothing sharp sticking out and it'll work but i'm glad we got to use some foundation and after half a century put it to work and in the morning i will make three more frames to drop in here Oh, that's nice and sturdy and after just a nice night of the fan blowing on this and Ensuring everything's nice and dry. This will get a fresh coat of paint in the morning um, Once it has that paint and it's dry. I, I think I'll put it into use uh, I've caught a few swarms already this season uh, from swarm calls and I bet this one is going to be the next one to house a swarm um but I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's, it's a nice old hive, and it's going to have a longer life now. Well, here's our finished product. Uh, a couple coats of paint on it, and right now that it is drying up. I only did one coat on the inside, because I didn't feel it needed more than that. And it is coming along. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pop out the extra entrance that they put in there. And I, I'll probably just use a piece of flex tape on both sides of that uh, other hole to cover it up. But, works for me. But, you can see, uh, this will have a long life that will continue. Uh, because there's very little rot on the box. And it hasn't held bees in over a decade. And it'll be holding a swarm soon. Well, thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe.